This exercise is on the normal tab of the student heights spreadsheet. Um, we've recognized that if variation is caused by random effects, the frequency and the magnitude of those particular deviations can be predicted or modeled by the Gaussian equation, resulting in what's known as a normal curve. In order to take best advantage of this ability to predict, we need to relate the normal distribution to probabilities and that's what this exercise is about. First of all you can see we've got a normal curve or a normal distribution drawn up here and that's drawn using the Gaussian equation which you can see is written in here and the terms in the Gaussian equation the parameters in the Gaussian equation, the mean which sets the center point of the distribution and the standard deviation which sets what the spread of the distribution is. And so we can see that we've got some parameter that can vary, we're calling it height, um, and we've got the frequency of those variations that are likely to occur if the variability is caused by random factors if it is caused by random factors, then if we were to go out and measure this parameter in a population, then it would approximate to this kind of distribution. This distribution models the distribution of errors, or the distribution of deviations away from the mean, the mean being here. Um, it tells you how frequently you're going to get a deviation of a certain size. So if you've got a very large deviation from the mean, so here's the mean, is a large deviation away from it, the frequency is very low. The actual relationship between the frequency of the variation, the frequency of the error, that's the difference between the mean and the, the individual, is related to the size of the variation is related to the frequency by this equation, the Gaussian equation. You can have a little play around with it um, if you change the standard deviation from point 1 to 0 0.2 then you see that the, the curve flattens out. The distribution has become wider. It's still a normal distribution because it follows the Gaussian equation but you've changed the parameter in it and making the standard deviation larger means that it's more spread out. If we turn it back to 0 0.1 What we're interested in is the, the area under the curve. In order to relate the normal distribution to probabilities, then we need to find out the area under the curve. What you're actually going to do is produce a statistical table. Normally, well, some time ago, these were found in, in, in books, printed versions. Nowadays, the, the statistic that we're going to be working out is one that you'll access directly through the application, whether it's a statistics package or Excel itself. Um, but um, you're going to produce your own little statistical table. We've got this notional variable called height. Clearly it's not really height. We don't have people that are uh, um, so small. Um, but we've basically got 100 classes. So we've got, if you look at the equation that's in here, um, we've got a height class which has been set using the class interval size. We set the class interval as 0 0.02 um, which means that we've got so we've got 50 cells overall which is what you can easily look at on a spreadsheet. So we've broken our distribution into 50. We've got 50 evenly spaced classes. Then we use the Gaussian equation in order to work out what the frequency of the um, deviation from the mean would be. You can see that the equation refers to the mean. That's how can work out what the, the um, so it relates to the deviation from the mean um, and also uses the standard deviation. So that equation is copied down here and that's what's drawn under here. The area under the curve is going to be the, the width times the height. Effectively each of these could be seen as a, as a small column underneath here and as a small rectangular column 
the area of a small rectangle or, or a larger rectangle but the area of a, a rectangle is the, the base times the height and the base is the height class which is constant of 0 0.02 and the height which is the y direction is the frequency so if you multiply the two together you can see what's going on here the class multiply which is the x multiply by the y you get the area and the area if we add all the areas under the curve together we get one which is what we set up it's effectively our um, sample size this is the unit normal distribution so we set it up so it adds up to one so the area under our curve equals one um, what we want to do then is to work out what the area under the curve is that corresponds to the area within one standard deviation of the mean <clears throat> so the mean is here standard deviation is 0.15 so if you move 0.15 away imagine drawing a line down here uh, mean 0.15 away and draw a line down here we want to work out the area under the curve so you can see what that means graphically and quite simple to do in this table as well the area under the whole curve is 1 we want to work out the area under the curve that corresponds to the area within one standard deviation of the mean the mean is 0 0.5 the standard deviation is 0 0.1 so we need to consider the area between 0 0.4 and 0.6 that's the area within one standard deviation of the mean in order to work that area out the simplest way of doing it is just to make cell G20, G27 equal to E27 that's the area and copy that down to 0.6 so we've just selected from the total area we've selected those areas that lie within one standard deviation of the mean and then we want to have the total of that area the total of that area we can have as the sum and we've got 0 0.73 we want to do the same thing for two standard deviations and three standard deviations. Two standard deviations, the mean's 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 will give us 0 0.3. And from 0 0.3, we need to go down to or up to 0 0.7. And then we can get that area two standard deviations to the mean got 0.96 and then let's just fill the last one in three standard deviations to the mean we've got a mean of 0.5 uh, three standard deviations means we're going to go from 0.2 To up to 0.8 and total these numbers then are ones that allow us to relate the normal distribution to probabilities these numbers should match the numbers in a statistical table. There's actually some discrepancies because we're working at quite a low resolution. Instead, we've split our height classes. We've, we've split it into um, only 50. If we'd had this at 500 or 1,000, then we'd get numbers that are close to those that you'd find in a statistical table. We've ended up with a value of 0.72, 72%. Um, be, well nearly 73% we'd be saying 73% of the distribution lies within one standard deviation of the mean actually 
because of this problem with the resolution that the real value is just over 68%. The value for two standard deviations again should actually be um, slightly different. You've got 96% but the actual value should be about 95.5% so a slight deviation there and then three standard deviations it's 99.8% um, which is again it's, it's closer to the real value. Um, that means that the, the value that we normally work to in terms of confidence um, in experiments is 95% and 95% is very close to two standard deviations. It's actually within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean that 95% of the distribution lies. So 95% of the whole distribution lies within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. These values are known as D values the number of standard deviations away from the mean that delimit a certain proportion of the distribution are known as D values. So 1.96 which is the number of standard deviations away from the mean uh, within which 95% of the distribution lies is known as a D value. So 1.96 is the sort of number that you would look, look up in a table of D values.